are these people? So this is a very old piece. This is from the beginning. This um, this was really the first time <laughs> something happened on Twitter with a person who wasn't a politician, and it directly inspired a piece. Um, and that was with a friend of, I'm sure, a lot of people on here, uh, Lauren, from, from back in the day. Um, Biden's Harry Leg was her username. And she had shared once an account of her experiences with sexual assault. And a bunch of people decided to just post the most hideous shit in her comments possible. And then in her DMs. And when she started posting about what she was receiving, she ended up getting suspended. And it was one of those times early on, you know, um, 2020 primary era that we were watching the censorship start and watching it happen in real time, watching people get plucked off. And you knew what it was for. You watch them tweet something and then sure as shit, like, oh, oh they're gone two hours later. Um, and realizing what we were up against and that the site that we thought was our, our you know, <laughs> last uh, bastion of, of quick, uh, as free of speech as you're allowed anymore, was, was suddenly getting very, very uh, bottlenecked and having... Um, yeah, having a very a very clear uh, hand coming in and cherry picking people that it didn't want speaking up anymore, and uh, yeah, this this piece came out of that, um, and uh, it, it it's off of the virus. Uh, for those of you wondering what the sound is throughout that beat, it is uh, it's my kid's jump rope that I just am whipping around the mic uh, on on time, but there's a and that's that's just the jump rope. Um, so anyways, this is a uh, spoken word version of uh, Biden's hairy leg off of the virus. It takes a strong woman and a voice without fear to speak up in the face of who we are this year. So if you see a strong woman, you should tell her that she's strong because the strong don't get to speak for very long. We love to sing the praises of our First Amendment rights. We love to feign encouragement to truly speak your mind, tell you that your speech is free, go say what you like. But our speech isn't free. We pay for it in friends, and they're dropping like flies. They're disappearing right before our eyes. And every day, what Twitter calls free speech is being redefined, slowly shaped in Biden's image and the alt-right, gutless rape apologists and mothers who are quick to claim they want Trump out so badly that they'd offer Joe their child for a night. Christ, I tell myself that all of those are bots so I can function in my off time. I'm out here trying to raise a child so I don't have the time or means to find out where these people live and go hold them to the fire till they swear that they can see the light. So you can keep the party. It is not where my allegiance lies. It's in defending every rape survivor scrutinized. It's in uplifting every voice they try to euthanize. Your leaders see you, honey, but they do not view with human eyes. Instead, they let us have our little space to bicker. Split up into factions where we're grouped by belief, and I bet you Twitter sits back and bets on which will eat itself quicker. Free speech is governed by an all-seeing eye and a silent listener, who pulls the plug on anyone who dares to try and tell you that you're prisoners. Arbitrarily suspends a woman trying to defend herself from colonies of rape enablers flooding her DMs with trauma triggers. And then she's suspended. And they don't tell her why, but I think we understand. But let me get it straight for her assassin if he's listening, because he's such a simple man. You can call a woman a whore or a cunt or a slut or a bitch or make light of her rape or pretend like you know where she lives or go dig up a picture of her parents or her kids and there's zero repercussions. Isn't that how it stands? But somehow she gets banned? Well, in case you didn't look into the people that you silence, you seem to target those of us who fight to stem the tides of bitter vitriol from those intent on mocking rape survivors and belittling domestic violence. Well, Twitter banned me now before I find that fucking Chad and drag him out his filthy basement by his eyelids. Say, if you could see me, motherfucker, I am smiling. Speech is not free. It's a sliding scale based on how well you follow guidelines, how well you keep your mouth shut. How few waves you make at Epstein Island. Speech is not free. It's been hunted for a decade through the highlands. So that even when it's sleeping, it hears echoes of the dogs and the rattle of its shackles and its chains. And the dream always starts when it trips on a root and ends a millisecond shy of when the dog bites in. 
and it wakes up to find that another brilliant mind got silenced in the night for speaking truth about Joe fucking Biden. And I have never felt a gut punch that hit so physical from losing someone only in the medium provided. But if she hears this, I hope that she can feel like she owns this song, even though I'll write it. You were gone in a flash, but you left enough gas for us to burn and fight another year, and we will fucking fight it. Do you hear me, Twitter? We will fight it. It's called holding to your standards, motherfucker. You should try it. I hope tonight you're lying in the dark, wide awake, and the sound of you kneecapping free speech splits the quiet. It's ironic that you call yourself support when what you do is disproportionately silencing survivors. So maybe drop support and call yourselves defilers. Call yourselves defenders of a bunch of corporate interests who suppressed our right to speak amid a global crisis. Then ask yourselves if you've been on the same side as the virus. Your kind have been a thorn in our side since the days of Osiris. And I knew you in some form then, back when I penned your lyrics on papyrus. Now here we are again, and by Twitter's scale of dangerous subversion, I would like to think I'm high risk. But ultimately, Twitter gets to pick and choose the flavor of your global news and leave you in the litter of a hundred different Biden bots with all the same worldview who will constantly barrage you with filth until you're clawing out your iris. So this might just be the last song before I'm silent. And if it's Bon Voyage, tell my mom and my son I was a kamikaze pilot. <laughs> And that's Biden's hairy leg. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. All, all you can see in the in the chat is just fire, absolute fire, fire. <laughs> yep, man, it's uh, it's crazy to go through. I haven't I haven't read through that piece since I recorded it, and it's crazy to think that that's been three years now. It's been <laughs> three. Yeah, three and a half years since I did the virus. Um, and again, it's one of those, I really wish that these songs had like zero relevancy anymore. And we were just like, oh yeah, remember when all that was going on? <laughs> I really, really do. And I remember, I think I mentioned that last time, that my my brother who who did the artwork for the virus and inauguration gift, he when he first heard Town Hall, he was like, you know, if you didn't, name names if you didn't say joe biden or bernie this song would be applicable for any time period aren't you worried that this is going to anchor it to this moment in time and then it's only going to be relevant for you know as long as they're in office or whatever and i was like i'd rather it be super pointed for now and and hit now on the head and and i hope that in a few years we're not worried about any of this shit anymore uh, here we are yeah. here we are yeah. a few years later well. and like the names change, but the fucking script is exactly the same. And that's that's the whole whole point is that it doesn't matter then that you can Joe Biden can be a stand in for it, whoever we're about to put in office, whoever's been in office, it's it's the same end goal. And we uh we suffer the same. <laughs>